Hello everyone and welcome to Cryptography Home. In this video, I will be introducing the Julius Caesar cipher as well as explaining how it operates. Now the Julius Caesar cipher is an example of a historical algorithm that was used and his colleagues in order to send messages secretly. So even back then, people were still able to come up with creative ways to send messages to each other in a secret format. In this video, I will be explaining how the algorithm works as well as other mathematical uh, concepts that are associated with the algorithm. Now, first of all, Julius Caesar cipher works by shifting all letters three to the right. This means that a letter A will become D, B becomes E, C becomes F, and so on and so forth. Encryption simply happens by shifting every letter three to the right. And in the same manner, letters at the end of the alphabet, such as Y, becomes B because it is being shifted in a secular fashion. So Y, Z, A, then B. In the same manner, X becomes Y, Z, then A, and Z is resolved to C. So that's how the algorithm works. It simply shifts letters three to the right in a secular manner. In so doing, a message such as I love crypto system becomes this new cipher text. You see that every individual plain text element has simply been encrypted by shifting it three times to the right. So C after shifting three times to the right is F, R is U, and so on and so forth. And with the Julius Caesar cipher, since we're simply encrypting by shifting letters to the right, our encryption key is a numerical value. In this case, the encryption key is 3 because we are shifting letters 3 times to the right in order to encrypt the plain text message. However, for us to proceed with different variations of the Julius Caesar cipher, we have to look at a concept which is known as modulus. So this modulus concept helps us to be able to represent text in a numerical form and also for us to perform mathematical operations with the text. So in this section we will be looking at what modulus is and it is very important. So in mode 10 the elements are simply 0, 1, 2, 3 all the way up to 9 which means mode 10 is simply the set of all non-negative integers less than 10. In the same way, mode 26 is the set of all non-negative integers less than 26, which means all integers from 0 up to 25. So when we're dealing with Julius Caesar cipher, since we're working with the 26 letters of the alphabet, we use mode 26 as our encoding mechanism. Like I said, most, mode 26 will consist of 26 numbers, which is in line with the 26 letters of the alphabet. For example, A will be encoded to 0, B will be encoded to 1, C will be encoded to 2, D will be encoded to 3, and so on and so forth. And the last element is Z, which is encoded to a 25. Now, modulus helps us to be able to represent the encryption in a mathematical form. For example, if we were to encrypt 24, which is a Y, since our key is 3, we add 3 to 24, and since we're working in mode 26, our answer becomes 1. Since 24, 25, and then we move to 0, then we move to 1. In so doing, we've shifted three times. Another way to represent this is 23, 24 plus 3 is 27. But since we're working in mode 26, modulus simply represents the remainder after dividing by 26. So the remainder after dividing 27 by 26 is 1. And this is another way of representing it, which means 24 plus 3 in mode 26 is 1. This percentage symbol is the one that I'll be using for modulus in this video, and it is also commonly used in other programming languages. So for some of you, you may be familiar with that symbol. In the same manner, 25 plus 3 gives us 28, but in mode 26, we're simply taking the remainder after dividing by 26, and the remainder is Two, which means a 25 will be encrypted to a C and so on and so forth. So what you have to know is it is not always that our encryption key is 3. Sometimes we may choose to change the encryption key. For example, if our encryption key is 10, to represent this in form of modulus, an element such as 16, which is Q, will be encrypted to 16 plus 10 gives, 16 plus 10 gives us a 26. And when you divide 26 by 26, the remainder is 0. Which means when the key is 10, 16 will be encrypted to 0. So overall, this is the concept of modulus. And this is how we'll be using to increment, uh, to implement the Julius Caesar cipher. To represent this in terms of a formula, the encryption of P 
over an element p is equal to p plus 3 mod 26. Since our key in the Julius Caesar cipher is 3, to encrypt any plain text element we simply add, have to add 3 to it and then we represent the answer in mod 26. And decryption, which is the opposite of, encry of encryption, we simply have to subtract 3 from the cipher text element. So that is how we we'll decrypt in Julius Caesar cipher. However, there is an alternative way to decrypt text, and this is simply by adding 23. So you find that whether you subtract 3 or you add 26, since the algorithm works in a secular manner, like I already said, you will still arrive at the same answer. You can try this out if you wish to see if it works. So, however, the, there is one problem with the second uh, method, which we'll be using in this video. For example, if you want to encrypt a character like B, which is 1, to decrypt I mean so since our key is 3 1 minus 3 gives us negative 2 and the solution to representing negative numbers is that with a Julius Caesar cipher elements can also be represented in negative starting from Z so Z is negative 1 Y is negative 2 and so on and so forth and we move from the last element going back to the first element so this is how it moves from right to left and you find that a can also be represented as negative 6. This means that when you're decrypting your text, if you arrive at a negative number, you can simply use this negative table to represent the text. In this case, 1, which is B, can be uh, decrypted to negative 2, which is Y. So a B is decrypted to a Y. And that is another notation for uh, representing uh, the Julius Caesar cipher elements, or another way of encoding the elements, which involves using negative numbers. So, like I said before, it is not all the time that we use a key of 3. Sometimes we can have a custom key. For example, when your key is 5, to encrypt, you simply have to add 5 to your plain text element and express the number in mode 26, and the result that you get leads you to the cipher text element. Likewise, to decrypt, you take the cipher text minus 5 and then express it in mode 26 to arrive back to the plain text. And this leads us to a general formula for the Julius Caesar cipher. In general, the encryption of an element P is equal to P plus K mode 26. And the decryption is simply C minus K mode 26, where P is the plain text element, C is the cipher text element, and K is our encryption key. So this is how we can represent the Julius Caesar cipher. We can also have custom keys. For example, if your key is 7, it means to encrypt, you'd have to shift the letters, 7 elements, to the right. And when you're, and when you're decrypting, you'd have to shift them, 7 elements, to the left. And that is how custom keys works. The next concept that we'll cover in this video is cryptanalysis. Now, in the last video, we looked at what cryptanalysis is, which is simply the process where somebody tries to arrive to the original plain text without having the key. But you see that with the Julius Caesar cipher, we only have 26 possible keys, which makes it easier for somebody to perform cryptanalysis. This means that when you have a, plain, a cipher text element, such as this, which is on the screen, you will, to decrypt it, you simply have to try the 26 possible keys. So, since we do not know what the key is, to perform cryptanalysis, somebody has to try the keys manually. So you can start with a key of 1, and a key of 1 gives you this, uh, plain text. A key of 2 gives you this, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. Remember that the decryption formula is C minus K, and we are representing this in mode 26. So to perform cryptanalysis, you simply try different sets of keys until you reach a key which gives you uh, an st a statement that makes sense. For example, in this example, our encryption key is 8 because only 8 8 is giving us a message that makes sense, which is crypto is fun. Now that we have arrived to a message that makes sense, we can conclude that our key is 8. S but what you have to know is that when you're using a computer, it will be able to generate all the possible plain text in a fraction of a second, which means that Julius Caesar cipher is not very secure with the modern day and age. Because with the present day, you can simply perform cryptanalysis in a fraction of a second. And also, even if you're not using computers, as long as you know that the algorithm being implemented is Julius Caesar cipher, somebody can still be able to perform cryptanalysis on, on a piece of paper in a shorter period of time, which means Julius Caesar cipher is not very secure. 
However, in the modern day, we have different types of crypto systems, which are harder to crypto analyze, as the second statement states. And we'll look at some other modern day crypto systems in the next video. So having reached this far, this is the end of this video. We've looked at uh, the Julius Caesar cipher and how we can encode elements in mode 26. So yeah, having reached this far, this is the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Like if you like the video. Subscribe if you'd like to. And I'll see you next time. Bye.